How do you match higher end cameras like, say, the Aria Mira with slightly lower end cameras like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K? Hi guys and girls, my name is Scott Peters, a director and cinematographer based in London, England. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, well, you could consider it. Just before the Christmas break of 2019, my friends over at Dad Bod Films asked me if I'd like to come on as a cinematographer on a shoot they were producing for Under Armour with world heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua. For the interview segment of the shoot, the client wanted multiple angles for the cut. The budget for kit was okay, but not enormous. So whilst we could afford to rent the slightly cheaper out of the Alexa family, Amira, we couldn't afford to rent three of them. So for the BNC camera, I opted to go for the slightly cheaper Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. There are a few different decisions I made in order to try and get the image out of the cameras we were using feeling consistent in the cut. Firstly, I shot the master wide on the Amira. I think it may have been on either a 24mm or a 35mm, but it was definitely on a Canon Cine Prime. Then we used a 50mm on the B cam and something wild like a 135mm on the C cam, thinking that the increase in the bokeh that we'd be getting, or bokeh, which I learned earlier this year is how it should be pronounced, don't see that catching on anytime soon. I thought the increase in the bokeh that would come from shooting on longer focal lengths on the BNC camera would help to distract from the difference in the images we were getting. Some might say I'm talking out my ass, but that was my thought process and I think it worked. Secondly, I made sure that all three of the cameras had the same Hollywood Blackmagic filters in front of the lens, using a higher strength for the widest, a strength two, then a strength one on the 50 mm and lastly a half on the 135 mm This made sense to me. The less depth and crazy bokeh or bokeh that we were getting in amongst the blasting of the haze, the more filtration we'd need to make it feel consistent. Lastly, we had a great colorist who, despite having little time to turn the edits around, did a smashing job at making sure that everything felt, and here comes that word again, consistent. I haven't got any scientific knowledge to back up why this works, but this is what I did. And I think if you take a look at the final rushes, you'll find it quite hard to differentiate what camera was what, if I hadn't already told you. I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed what you learnt, saw, then give the video a like. It really helps it to reach others. I'm posting a new video every week, so if you still haven't yet, make sure to subscribe for more semi-helpful tips and interesting insider industry knowledge. 